Hello, this is Michael with Glossika. This week's update, we just wanted to let you know that we're making some changes to how you do the review. Basically, this is just an interface change, so that's a little bit more clear for everybody. So first of all, I want to go into a little bit more detail about how the review works. So the default review is based on spaced repetition, obviously. But um, the way it works is that we calculate the stability of all of the items that you practice. So that means that if, a, if an item that you practiced has really strong stability, but its memory percentage has dropped down to maybe 70 or 60 or 50%, we don't waste your time by bringing that back up again to practice because we assume that your memory or your strength, your, your stability on that memory is actually stronger so, uh, than other memories that are more recent. So if you use the default item, which is the first one on the list, we're changing that so that it actually says spaced repetition and it's, you know, it's based on stability and all of this so, so that you know. Now the second option is for when you feel like that you're still not remembering some of those ones that you've done uh, later on. And this might be actually better for those of you who are using, uh, for example, you're just doing the listening mode because uh, the first option is really great for those of you who are doing the typing mode because we can actually calculate all of your correct and wrong answers. So if you're just doing the listening mode, maybe the second option is better for you because that's going based on your memory strength. So that when the numbers drop down to 70 or 60%, those memories are going to be first in the queue uh, to practice uh, or review or revise. So uh, when you go back and, and go into that option, you're going to be getting the memories uh, that you most recently practiced because uh, they're dropping really fast. When the stability gets stronger, of course, uh, when when that happens, basically those memories are not going to drop as fast, so their percentage is going to stay a little bit higher. But over time, they will, you know, they could get down to 70 or 60 percent, and it just depends on when the algorithm is triggered or that threshold is reached. When there's a you know a cross in the lines, it's going to say, hey, these uh, these memories need to be practiced again. Now, of course, the other options are still in there. For example, practicing your favorites, um, practicing your own collection of sentences. And then we also have that option where you can go back and say, I just want to practice the items from level A1 or A2, B1 or B2, whatever. So you can go back and, and do all of those uh, as you wish. So all of those options are available to you. When you first do your first session of review, what's going to happen, it's going to come up with that screen and ask you what kind of review do you want to start with. So, you know, we recommend the, uh, the default, which is the first item on the list. And then if you ever want to go and change that again, you can just go into the options where you have the little, um, what is that, the gear uh, icon in the session. Open that up and down at the bottom are the memory, I'm sorry, the review uh, revision settings. Okay, so um, the other thing that we're working on is a lot of work on our Viva platform. And so the Viva platform right now is we're, we're rolling out all of the male and female type of translations because we want to make sure that male and female translations are correct based on the kind of uh, recordings that we get. So for example, if you're, um, if you're a male speaker, we want you to be recording the male um, translations and so we're also adding something in there so that we're getting the male and female translations correctly. Um, the interesting, about, interesting thing about male and female speaking in, in other languages is that sometimes when when you speak as a male the verbs that you use will change. How you say the word you will change as well. Uh, it depends on you know from language to language. But the other thing that's interesting, now you, you'll only find that in discourse. For example, when you're speaking in first person and second person, I and you. Now the other thing is that you can also get that in third person. For example, when I say uh, my friend is a student, well your friend, is that a, a female friend or is it a male friend? Is student a, a, a female student or a male student? Um, so for example, if you say um, the teachers are teaching the students today, that could also have a male and female because you might want to say the teacher is a male student, uh, male teachers, uh, and they're teaching uh, a group of mixed male and female students. So there's a lot of different things that we need to consider in order to get the translations correct. Um, and so when when we're pairing the the actual people recording the sentences, what we're doing in the in our first stage is basically 
if you're a male speaker, we're only going to have you record the male versions of those sentences and also in the third person. For example, the male teachers are teaching um, the students. We're just going to have the male people, you know, stick with doing the male versions and the females uh, stick with recording the female versions. That way, it's actually kind of intuitive so that if you're, if you're learning a language um, and let's say you're learning an East Asian language and I know a lot of people are like, you know, I don't really, as a guy, I don't want to sound like um, a female, so I don't really want to learn from a female voice and vice versa. Uh, so a lot of times, you know, you, you might want to actually choose somebody that you most identify with and learn how to speak like they do. All right, well, that's all we have for this week's update. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back next week. Bye.